Hey boo, it's Juliana Michaels and welcome to my channel. The Halloween making continues with another card featuring some of the stamps and stencils from the Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous 2024 Halloween release. In this video, I'm sharing how I created this beautiful card and some tips for using the Jack stencil to create the background. Feel free to use products from your stash to recreate something similar and craft along with me. However, if you are interested in any of the products I'm using, you can find the full supply list with links in the description box below. Click on the word more to see more. And when you shop through those links, you're supporting me, but it's at no extra cost to you and I really appreciate that so much. For this card, I'm going to be working with some of the new stamps and stencils from the Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous Halloween 2024 release. And the stencil I'm going to be using is the Jack stencil from the Mini Set 61. This also comes in the larger size as well. And the stamp sets I'm going to be using are the Spooky Spirits. I'm going to be using specifically these sentiments here. I'm going to be working with the Boo Crazy stamp set. and. Then I'm also going to be working with an older stamp set that's called Crazy Things because I'm going to be dressing up my ghosty here with some of the Halloween themed stamps on this set. So some of the supplies I'm going to be using for this card include um, Distress Ink and Black Soot and Spiced Marmalade, but you could also switch these out for Oxide Inks if you'd like. And the inks I'm going to be using for the stamping are Black Soot Archival Ink and then Shadow Gray Archival Ink. To create the embellishments, I'm going to be kind of following along with a previous card that I created and how I colored it. So I will reference that in this video and link to it as well. But I'll be coloring in those images using some of the antique linen. Distress ink and then some distress watercolor pencils and villainous potion, peeled paint, fossilized amber, and spiced marmalade. And if you don't have the watercolor pencils to color with, you could also just use your distress inks and smush those onto the craft mat and use a paintbrush to color in with those as well. And then the papers I'll be working with for this card are distress watercolor cardstock and then black craft stock. Now we're going to start off with the stenciling and as you can see the stencil does not fit um, all the way across the card and then it also is kind of designed to be somewhat of its own like shifter type stencil so you can stencil the solid images and then move this to stencil the detailed images and so that's kind of what I'm going to do here for the background but a little trick for helping kind of keep things lined up and nice and neat is to use some mint tape which is just a low tack tape. This is a four inch roll and I like this one for this particular stencil because I want to be able to cut these pieces of tape and use them to kind of mask off areas that I don't want to get ink on. So these pumpkins are about seven eighths of an inch in size so I'm going to cut kind of measure and cut some strips that are that width so that I can use them to mask off the areas that I don't want to get ink on. So just going to do some measuring here. Mark these off and need three of them. going to take my scissors here and cut from one end to the other here. You have to be exactly perfect, but once I get these positioned on the stencil, you will be able to see what I'm talking about as far as how much this is going to help with things. So now, since we're going to, we'll do the, the solid part first, so then we can cover up that section 
while we're applying the orange ink so that we don't accidentally get it into those areas. And then you can position your stencil on your paper. I'm going to line it up to the center and try to go to the top here. And you can use, kind of peel that back and kind of help get this whole thing kind of centered from top to bottom on the card and in the center. Because as we shift, these pumpkins will be here kind of a thing. So be there. And then I'm also going to grab just some of the one inch mint tape and run that along the edge here so I don't accidentally get ink off the side there. And I'm also going to cover up the hole on the top of the stencil because as we move this up and down sometimes that um, I get ink through that too. So just thought I would share that with you. So now we got everything in position and we can take whatever ink colors we want and blending brush and then just apply that ink through the stencil here. And then like I mentioned, you can use oxide ink on this if you would prefer. Okay, now we are going to lift this up. And I want to get pumpkins like all the way across the paper. So I'm going to line them up here and just take that down again. I'm going to do some more pumpkins there. And we're going to do the same thing over here. And if you're like me and you're starting to get ink on your fingers, you might want to keep a little baby wipe or a damp towel next to you so you can kind of wipe your fingers off in between and your craft mat so that you don't accidentally smear any ink onto something that you don't want it on. Clean that off a little bit here. And as you can see, I already smeared it a little bit, but that's all good. And then now we're going to put the pumpkins down across through here, but I want to, instead of going just straight down in a row, which you can, I want to like shift them a little bit so that we're centering the next row with the ones above it. And if you're concerned that you're not getting things lined up with the pumpkins below them, what you can do is just kind of peel back one of those sections and kind of use that to help because that's where it's going to go next when we do the black layer so we're just going to shift it over put that in the middle okay. everything back down. Now I'll do the orange in this row. And then we're just going to pick that up and shift it again to go this way. Now I want to fill that space in as well. Let's put it back over here. There we are. So there's our first layer. And now we're gonna need to clean the stencil too, so we can remove that tape. Let's save it because we can use that again.
and just plain off that, that ink. Now we're going to just kind of repeat that same process with the, um, the detailed section here. So we can just bring that tape back up over these areas. Now this time we're doing it over the solid ones. We're just going to line this up with our pumpkins that we did the orange. So this part kind of gets pretty easy. So you can, can like even stick that down and then line that up. And I, just so you know, these designs do not line up just exactly perfectly. And that was intentional um, just, as to, just as part of the design when Tim was creating these. And so now I'm just going to add the black soot ink. And then the detail. And then I'm also going to add another little strip down here along the bottom just to protect that area. And we'll just peel that up and continue that process of shifting this until we get all the rest of them colored in. So here is the finished stenciled background. And now the next step what we're going to do is add a little bit of some stamping using some of the sentiments from the Spooky Spirit stamp set. And all I've done is just lined them up on an acrylic block and just kind of used these lines that are on here to help kind of guide um, lining them up. And then I'm going to stamp this with this shadow gray archival ink. And this is just a real light gray because I didn't want anything that was going to be competing too much with the um, stenciled work. So I'm just stamping it repetitively across the paper here. And I'm going to just kind of shift it a little bit so that it's not exactly the same going all the way across. If you don't have this ink, um, you could just use a different um, color, would be just fine. I just recommend some sort of a waterproof ink if you want to do the next step that I'm going to add to this. So the next step in the background here is I'm going to just add some water splatters. So you can skip this part if you want, just kind of really up to you. And I'm just going to kind of slowly pull the trigger on the distress sprayer to kind of get a combination of big and little droplets. And then I'm going to take a clean paper towel, just dab that over the top here. And as you can see, that ink was reactivated because it's water reactive ink. And then I'm just able to like dab that off and lift it off and then it just creates just kind of another layer of interest to the card. So one step I'm going to add here is just kind of a last minute thought. I'm going to add a little bit of some splatters using the Distress Spritz Spiced Marmalade. So you can see that's all sitting there on the bottom. Just need to shake that up really well and get that mixed in. There's a little uh, mixing ball in here that you, when you shake it, it will help break that up and get it mixed in. So now that I've got it mostly mixed in, I'm going to just unscrew the lid here and add some splatters just by tapping the nozzle onto the paper with my finger and just working in a little splat box here to kind of help control the splatters so they don't get all over my desk. And that's just a paper towel on the bottom there too to help absorb any of that excess ink. And then I can just set this to the side to dry or dry that with my heat tool. And there you can see it just adds just a little touch of shimmer and shine to the background. Again, another one of those steps that you could totally skip if you like. You could also use the mica stains for this as well, and just if you, especially since you're just doing splatters, and add a little shimmer that way too. So off camera, I use some archival ink and black soot. Just need some sort of waterproof ink, and stamp the ghost from Boo Crazy and the little jack o' lantern and witch's hat from crazy things onto some distressed watercolor cardstock 
And I used this same technique in a previous video. I mentioned this at the beginning of this video. And I'm going to reference that video instead of doing it all over again here. Um, but we just did some ink smushing to color in the ghost and then um, use the Distress watercolor pencils to color in the hat and the jack-o'-lantern. And then use some scissors to fussy cut them. And then here is a look at the finished and assembled ghosty that I colored. And then for the sentiment, I used the Boo Crazy stamp set and stamped that onto a piece of black craft stock using embossing ink. And then I poured some white embossing powder over that and heat embossed it. And then I trimmed it out and then just sanded the edges of it to give it just a little bit of distress and interest there. And then this will be kind of the embellishment that will go on this background. So now to finish off the background, I'm just going to ink the edges with a little bit of black soot. And instead of pulling it like on the craft mat and rubbing it on, because I don't want a lot, I'm just going to rub the blending tool along the edge here. And it just gives a little bit of color without overpowering the design. And it just kind of helps that edge kind of stand out a little bit more. And then I'm going to layer that onto a piece of that black craft stock that I've um, sanded the edges of with the sandpaper. So a layer on there. And then I also decided to do a little piece of some vellum. It just felt like the ghost maybe gets a little bit lost on there, so I can't decide which option I like best, but that's just another idea for you if you wanted to you know, add a little vellum. This just added some machine stitching around the outer edge and then pop them on there. So, And I'll probably pop this up with a little bit of some foam tape to give it a little dimension. Here's a look at the finished card. I did end up adding the vellum layer and adhering the ghost with some double-sided foam tape for a little dimension. I hope you enjoyed seeing how this Halloween card came together using some of the 2024 Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous Halloween Stamps and Stencils. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can join me on a more regular basis. Hit the like if you enjoyed this video and if you want to join me on my other social media platforms, you can find the links to those in the description box below. Also, feel free to leave me a comment if you have any questions or if there's something you'd love to share with me and our community. I'll see you in the comments below and in the next video. Until next time, stay crafty, my friend.